And that'll teach you to record at 30 FPS instead of 60. Back to redoing the video. Okay, hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. We're nearing the end of October now and Ubuntu is around the corner. The new release is called Ubuntu 20.10, the groovy gorilla. There's plenty of new desktop features, plenty of new plumbing. But does it really deserve its name? I have some thoughts about where Ubuntu is at the desktop level. So we're going to take a tour of the new features and then I'm going to talk a little bit about what I think the Ubuntu desktop is nowadays and what it used to be. So let's find out what's new right after this. This video is sponsored by Linode. Founded in 2003, Linode is the largest independent cloud service provider built on open source. If it runs on Linux, it runs on Linode. Multiple distros are available including Ubuntu, CentOS, Alpine and of course Arch. The multiple server configurations make any app or service flexible and scalable to host a website, set up your own personal VPN, create a Nextcloud instance, host a game server, and more. Linode offers 24-7 support any day of the year by phone or support ticket, regardless of your plan size. The simple pricing with monthly caps ensures that there is no hidden fees and a generous monthly transfer is built in, which means there is no large bill surprises like you get from AWS or Azure. Sign up today at linode.com slash Linux experiments to get your $100 in Linux server credits. The link is in the description. Okay, let's start with the desktop features. Ubuntu 20.10 still uses GNOME, and it embarks version 3.38 of that desktop environment. First, the application grid can now be rearranged by hand. No more alphabetical sorting, you can put app icons in any order you desire, in the grid or in the application's folders. These folders now handle pagination if you have more than 9 applications in them and the grid will scale with the size of your display so you can see more apps if you have a big screen. The date indicator now displays your upcoming appointments, which is a feature I've been enjoying in elementary OS and that really helps with dealing with a crowded agenda. You also get a microphone indicator when recording audio or doing a conference call and you can mute the mic from that little icon, which is nice. Again, something I was used to on elementary OS since a few versions ago, but it's still nice to see it on Ubuntu now. You can also toggle the battery percentage in the power settings, and you'll see it in the indicator up top. Yeah, that's a small feature, but what's interesting about this is that it used to be available only in GNOME Tweaks, and there's an initiative to bring the settings from GNOME Tweaks back to the normal regular GNOME settings. And that's just the first step, and I think they're gonna bring some more stuff back into the regular main GNOME settings as time goes on, so we're gonna have to take a look at GNOME 40, the next release, to see what else they bring. Finally, you also get an option to reboot directly from the power menu, which might seem ridiculous and super small, but there you have it, you can finally reboot in one click. Ubuntu 20.10 also benefits from an improved interface for logging in through your fingerprint. Unfortunately, since none of my Microsoft keyboard or my fingerprint reader on my laptop are supported by Linux at the time of this video, I cannot showcase it to you. But uh, yeah, I heard that it works pretty well. Users of an Ethernet connection will also be able to share it through their Wi-Fi card thanks to a new QR code hotspot that you can just scan from a mobile device to connect to. Now let's move on to the applications. The application selection in Ubuntu 20.10 is unchanged, with Firefox as the web browser, LibreOffice as the office suite, and Thunderbird as the mail client. All these apps gain something interesting though, as LibreOffice now has an icon theme that actually integrates well with Ubuntu, it's based on Yaru and it looks pretty good in both light mode and dark mode. It also really helps the Office Suite integrate with the Ubuntu desktop and if you switch to the tab bar by default, which honestly I don't understand why isn't it made the default on any distribution, it just looks pretty good. Thunderbird benefits from a calendar plugin by default, which means that it's finally a complete solution out of the box. Even though I would have preferred they went with Geary and the GNOME calendar instead, as Thunderbird still really looks out of place in my opinion. And yeah, speaking about Thunderbird, it is a fantastic email client. It does plenty and it does it well. The only problem is that it doesn't look native at all on any desktop environment. It sticks out like a sore thumb, whatever the theme you apply to it. And I don't understand why distributions that want to ship a polished user experience would ship Thunderbird instead of the Evolution client, which even though it looks GNOME 2, it looks still better GNOME than Thunderbird does. And maybe just ship Geary and the GNOME calendar. They have less features, but for a basic user, they're enough. And they basically look native and right. Now, finally, the screenshot tool also gains a new look, but its feature set remains unchanged. Now, I also wish Ubuntu shipped more of the default GNOME applications by default. GNOME has improved in leaps and bounds in terms of default apps. Maps is now completely awesome, the sound recorder got a facelift and works super well, and the clocks and alarms application is a handy little app to have. 
and those applications combined don't take up a lot of space on the disk image and would really save a few minutes to anyone that needs them and they would tie in the desktop experience with more features that other systems have like macOS or Windows. So yeah, Ubuntu, come on, ship those apps. And Ubuntu also doesn't seem to ship the welcome tool that GNOME introduced in 3.38, which is a shame because Ubuntu is still the biggest gateway for newcomers to Linux and this welcome tool is specifically designed to welcome them to the GNOME environment, which is maybe a little bit daunting for users if they don't know how it works. They could have just adapted it just a little bit to reflect the fact that they have a dock by default. Apart from that, there's nothing changing here, so I don't know why they didn't ship that. Now, under the hood, Ubuntu 20.10 packs the Linux kernel version 5.8, so it's only one version behind the latest one out there and should get as much hardware support as was possible at the time that they released it. As always, the NVIDIA drivers are up to date as well. Ubuntu 20.10 also supports OEM kernels, so manufacturers that want to ship their own kernels with the support for their own hardware can do so. It's an important feature since Linux has been popping up on multiple big hardware manufacturers like Lenovo and Dell. So if these guys ever need to ship a custom kernel for, to make sure that their latest hardware is supported, well, now they can do it and they can still keep using Ubuntu without destroying every single part of the system around it. And we also need to have a word about the installer. It's getting a bit long in the tooth. It does its job, it's working and it doesn't look horrible, but there have been advances there, like the PopOS installer based on the new Elementorios installer, which is weird because PopOS got it before Elementary, but never mind, is a lot more friendly. The Deepin installer is also more friendly. Even the Calamaris installer has gotten better at marking to the user, at indicating to the user where they are in the installation process. The Ubuntu installer looks all right, but it's the first experience that people are going to have with the distro and it really needs to be more user friendly, accompany the user more and let them know more where they are and what they're actually doing. Now about the other flavors. Ubuntu Studio 20.10 moved to KDE as its default desktop instead of XFCE, which should give it a more interesting look and feel out of the box. And it also sees the return of the Jack Mixer. Ubuntu 20.10 ships with Plasma 5.19, which is a shame since 5.20 released a few days ago and it was a bit too late to be integrated. That sucks. It uses the KDE apps 20.08.1 and uses Firefox 81 as its main browser and LibreOffice as the default office suite. All KDE 4 and Qt4 libraries and apps have been removed from the archives since 20.04 and they're not coming back in this release either and a Plasma Wayland session is installable but still not supported officially. Ubuntu Budgie now allows you to search for the various GNOME settings panels individually. They have a new optional applet to have the menu as an app grid and they're using the Mojave icon theme which looks kinda Mac-like and kinda looks weird on a distribution that doesn't emulate the macOS look, but why not? The team has actually helped in fixing a bunch of bugs and paper cuts and the list is pretty long. You'll find a link in the description below. Now I couldn't find some pre-release notes for Xubuntu, Lubuntu, or Ubuntu Kylin, or Ubuntu Mate, so I'm not including them in this video, but by the time this releases and the disk release, they're probably gonna have published release notes, so you'll be able to see what's new in them. Okay, so let's conclude, and let's conclude by talking about Ubuntu as a desktop. The code names that they used to apply to these distributions with the adjective and the animal name used to represent what the distribution was going to be about. It used to mean something in terms of features and sets and nowadays I think it just means that they wanted to have word with a funny alliteration and they just found it sounded cool. Because there is nothing especially groovy about Ubuntu 20.10. It has some new features, it is a good release, but neither the groovy or the gorilla part mean anything this time. Ubuntu 20.10 will probably keep users happy for those who want to have the newest libraries and desktop environment releases while still keeping a stable base and not moving to a rolling release. It's a good choice. However, I think there's a problem with the Ubuntu desktop today and I think that's it lacks focus and vision. There are other Linux distributions that are desktop facing and geared towards users and these distributions have a vision and a purpose. Fedora wants to bring as little proprietary software as possible and a vanilla GNOME experience. And they want to focus on Wayland as their next big project. Elementary OS wants to bring a smooth and coherent desktop experience with native applications that all respect the same graphical user interface guidelines and that just integrate well. And their next big project is integrating Flatpak into every level of their system. Manjaro wants to be a rolling release based on Arch and provide the user with by default as many system utilities as they need 
and a consistent looking theme, a consistent looking experience throughout all the flavors that they offer. Now Ubuntu, on the other hand, I don't see where it wants to go. It used to have the biggest plans with Ubuntu One, with Unity, with Convergence, with Mobile, with Ubuntu Touch. And with these plans falling by the wayside or being abandoned completely, I think the distro is left in a bit of a limbo. It's like they thought that, yeah, these plans didn't work, so we're not gonna make plans at all anymore. And I think they're just resting on their laurels now. They're contributing to GNOME, they're helping improving it, but they don't have any big focus, any big vision. And I don't know if that's a bad thing. Like, Ubuntu is still a perfect gateway for newcomers. It's fast, it's fluid, it's simple, it looks good. If you like Orange and Aubergine, which I personally don't mind, so it's okay. It is a good distro, but it used to be the driving force behind the Linux desktop. They pushed it so hard ever since they introduced the first release of Ubuntu. They moved it forwards in so many ways. They fixed the 1000 paper cuts, they tried to improve with Unity, they worked on GNOME, on GNOME 2, on GNOME 3. They really pushed it forwards, and nowadays it seems like they are just content resting on their laurels. And in that sense, I think the codename is well deserved this time. Ubuntu is the 800 pound gorilla, and I just wish it were more groovy. So that's it for this video guys, I hope you enjoyed, if you did don't hesitate to like or dislike if you didn't. You can also subscribe and turn on notifications if you want to see more videos like this one. If you really want to help support the channel, you can join my amazing Patreon subscribers and YouTube members and get access to an exclusive monthly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover in my next videos. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!